Good morning, everyone. My name is Jessica Mingo. I'm part of the Davidson Institute team, and I'm going to be your host for today. Uh, we're really excited to be here with you this morning. Um, and so before we dive into this REACH Summer Seminar information session, I just wanted to go over a few housekeeping points so you have an idea of what to expect in this session. Uh, now, first, the session is intended to run for 60 minutes, so the session will include a presentation and will be followed by a Q&A, so you'll have a chance to answer or ask questions, um, and we will do our best to address as many questions as we can in the time allotted. Now, we'd like to point out that this is in a Zoom webinar setting, so it's designed so our staff can share their video, audio, and screen, but our attendees are in view-only mode. Uh, please note that the chat feature of Zoom has uh, or will be enabled at various points uh, in time. Um, and if you do have questions, to please direct those to the Q&A feature. Now, if there's a question that you'd like answered, you can upvote and comment on existing questions. Um, participants can also comment on others and their own questions um, if they want to add any clarifying information. So if you want to add some more context to your question, you can comment on that question um, or express that you're interested in the answer of that question as well. Uh, now, please stay through to the end of the session. You'll then be directed to our post-event survey to help us gather feedback on your experience. And we will have a recording of this live session. It will be available uh, on the Davidson member community. Um, and so now diving into this session, I'm pleased to introduce you to Kayla Latin, our Director of Summer Programs here at the Davidson Institute. Kayla, I'm passing this over to you. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Jessica. I'm just going to get my screen shared. OK. All right. Well, um, like Jessica said, thank you all so much for joining us this morning. Um, and before I dive into um, learning more about REACH, I wanted to start with a couple um, polls just to get us started and to see who is here today. So our first one is um, just been released and we're curious to see who here has a student who's been to overnight camp before, um, yes or no. Um, and please uh, go ahead and vote and we'll close that and share the results in just a few here. <clears throat> Okay. Oh, good. It looks like majority um, has a student who has uh, attended camp before, and um, the next uh, section is, is, you know, chunk of you also have students who have not been to camp before, which is totally fine. It's not a requirement, but uh, just something good to keep in mind as we go through this presentation. All right, our next poll is looking to see what ages of our students are here today. Um, so is your student under 11 and you're looking forward to this in future summers? Are they 11, uh, 12 or 13 or potentially are they over 13 um, and uh, maybe looking for a different program ex uh, experience based on our eligibility requirements? So we'll just take a second, and once we have majority of our votes in, we'll share the results of this one as well. Okay, it looks like um, most are within the eligibility, which is great, uh, 11 to 13, and uh, with most falling right in the middle at, at 12 years old. All right, and our last poll, I'd love to hear from you on what you're most interested in learning from this presentation. I'm going to be touching on all of these topics. Um, however, if there is um, an area where I can focus most of my efforts in, depending on uh, the majority of what you guys are looking to learn more about, I'd love to hear from you. If you do have an other, uh, you can type that in the chat and uh, we can read that as well. Um, but once this is closed, the chat will be uh, closed and all Q&A should be going into the Q&A box. So I'd love to hear what you're uh, looking forward to learning most about. There's a number of items here, so you can select your top three. <clears throat> okay. Looks like most are looking to learn more about um, the schedule and student life, including probably those activities and field trips, uh, seminar courses, and then um, kind of a chunk learning to wanting to learn more of the other um, options, including those highlighted program changes for this year. Wonderful. 
Well, we will go ahead and get started then. I didn't see anything in the chat box just yet. So if you do have questions throughout the program, please use the uh, Q&A box and um, I'll be answering a chunk of those live, but uh, Avery Harris is here uh, typing answers as well. So you can check to see if your questions been responded to that way throughout the presentation as well. All right, and then just to share a little bit more about who is here today, um, I myself, Kayla, I am the director of our summer programs department here at the Davidson Institute. Um, been here for about nine years, and this is my 10th summer with Davidson. And um, I love it at this uh, at these programs at this department. I've worked in a couple other departments with Davidson as well, but majority of my time has been spent with summer programs, and it's um, just what keeps me going all year. I get really excited and passionate about our programs and uh, meeting our students and um, parents and making those connections and providing these fun experiences for our students. Um, we also have behind the scenes, like I just mentioned, Avery Harris, our manager, our program manager here and she is um, the one who you will most uh, likely be talking to or emailing with uh, when you contact us. Uh, we do answer some of those as a team as well, but she is um, uh, the face to behind the name of all, all of our uh, program communication and she's uh, processing applications and very busy helping recruit and hire our seasonal staff as well. Um, this is she just hit about a year uh, full time, but she's been with us um, seasonally and part time in other roles previously. And um, we're really fortunate to have her here and really excited to um, move into the 2023 season with her on our team again. Uh, we have some contact information down at the bottom that you're welcome to jot down, but I'll have that posted at the end of the presentation as well. Okay, like I mentioned, we're going to go through all of these topics to learn more about REACH today. We're going to talk about overview, um, kind of what REACH is, who is running REACH, who's uh, the staff behind the scenes and during the front lines of the summer, uh, the schedule, uh, academics, health and wellness, how you can prepare for REACH, the, just a reminder of the highlighted changes that I'll actually go through earlier in the presentation and then uh, the application process and then we'll open up for Q&A at the end. Okay, so what is REACH? REACH is a summer overnight summer program for members of the Davidson Young Scholar program only. So if you are here today and your student is uh, maybe you have a, a, a one student in the YS program and a sibling who's not a current member that you're interested in this program for, um, you will need to submit a application to the Young Scholars Program for that sibling, or potentially you have no students uh, in the Young Scholars Program and you're here today, um, but just wanted to throw out that a reminder that that is a requirement, so it's exclusive to members in the Young Scholars Program only. Um, those in application process for the Young Scholars Program um, in this cycle can submit and receive a decision notification prior to the REACH application deadline. So there is still options to access REACH if you're not currently in the, the Young Scholars Program. Like all of our summer programs, we're located in Reno, Nevada on the University of Nevada, Reno campus. Um, it's a beautiful campus here and it's ever expanding um, and it's a really fun area to be all summer uh, hosting these camps. I'm alumni of uh, this university and so it's really fun to be back there in this uh, role. Uh, the age range, so we do age range eligibility, all of our students are um, in different grade backgrounds, grade accelerated, subject accelerated, so we do not um, do grade level uh, requirements, we have age range 11 to 13 during program dates, if your students under 11, they are not eligible for reach, they'll need to be uh, they're eligible for our STARS summer camp, which there's an information session for that later this week on Thursday. Um, and if they're over 13, they're unfortunately also not eligible for REACH and uh, might be looking forward to a different program experience like our THINK Summer Institute. REACH is a one week experience program and that has a new daily schedule I'll talk more about uh, coming up here in the presentation. We're really excited about this uh, shift and um, what it will bring for our students. Uh, during the program, students take one seminar course and all of our seminar courses are taught by Davidson Academy instructors. 
And the 2023 dates this year are Sunday, June 25th through Friday, July. Oh, sorry, that's supposed to be June. Friday, June 30th, excuse me. Um, and check-in occurs right at the end of the summit event. So if your family is registering for the summit and attending that this summer, you'll be pleased to know that check-in um, is right at the end of the event. So just to kind of touch a little bit more on that eligibility, like I mentioned, students must be a David Young Scholar. They must be 11 to 13. And then we also um, require them to meet all the essential functions of, of each student. So they must be prepared to be away from and completely out of contact with family members for six days, five nights. Think of it like a true, you're sending your kid uh, off to summer camp out in the woods and we don't allow cell phones. I'll talk a little bit more about that uh, later on in the presentation as well, but um, they need to be prepared for that experience. Um, they will be sharing a room with likely two participants, um, can vary some years, but sometimes it's one roommate, um, but usually two roommates in a uh, dorm residential community living environment. They will be participating in three to four hours of classroom and lab project-based hands-on time each day. They'll need to follow instructions from our staff and instructors, be um, good at uh, and motivated with their study independently um, during homework time and be able to complete their assignments. And then again, our electronic device policies that we do not allow devices that connect to the personal devices that can connect to the internet um, or have voice and text capabilities, even with that turned off. Um, we don't allow those because students can turn them back on during program, even if they're locked. So um, a true uh, MP3 player or digital camera or uh, throwaway camera, those kinds of things are allowed, but uh, like a cell phone or Kindle Fire, things like that, we do not allow at REACH. We do provide laptop for courses, and I'll talk more about that as well. Um, and, you know, they need to be able to ask for help if the problem or concern arises. We're checking in with students consistently uh, all day long. We have debrief uh, sections. We have staff 24-7 supervising, um, but uh, we are looking for students who are able and willing to ask uh, and check in with staff as needed. And they need to be able to um, operate independently um, you know, we provide supportive supervision when it comes to self care for meals, hygiene, um, you know, transitioning from one activity to another, social emotional regulation. Um, but um, they should be doing this uh, on their own with uh, not needing, uh, you know, too much support, just, um, you know, without. Uh, our staff are checking in with students, but um, and, and guiding them through the program and um, helping them make meal choices as needed or things like that. We do provide reminders for hygiene, but uh, they should be able to operate these things on their own for the most part. So if you're unsure if your student meets these essential functions or are ready for a program like REACH, please contact us. We're totally happy to have that conversation with you. Um, you can share a little bit more about where your student's at or maybe where what areas you have questions about, and then we can uh, provide more information. We can have a phone call, whatever that might be to um, be helpful and, and kind of go through that process because we want to ensure that your student's ready for this program. They're ready, they're going to be uh, have a much more successful experience. Some of the benefits of the REACH program, um, one of the biggest ones is uh, that they're going to be spending their time at this program with uh, other young scholars and like-minded peers. Um, that's huge. Uh, it was huge prior to the pandemic, and it's, I think, even bigger after the, uh, the, the pandemic as well. Um, students are coming from all kinds of backgrounds and might not have like-minded peers who are profoundly gifted like them. Um, and so often they come to our summer camps whether that's stars reach or think and they um they're like it clicks like these are my people this is my uh my tribe in a sense and so it's really cool to see them make connections with others and we're uh anybody who might be struggling through that process we're helping them through that as well um but it's a really huge benefit for these students in the summer 
they'll also get to challenge, uh, be challenged and through their project-based uh, seminars, they'll learn how to build some independence and skills when they're away from mom and dad and they're under our supportive supervision from our staff. They, um, you know, we, we work with them on building some of those life skills. They'll uh, also build confidence and hopefully some executive functioning skills through the um, self-driven seminar courses. They'll get to experience living on a university campus for the week, um, away from home, which is really exciting to be in the dorm hall, um, on campus, walking to and from class and uh, doing our activities. And then most importantly, also having fun. Uh, this is still a summer camp, and so we provide really fun evening activities that are curated uh, to be developmentally appropriate for this age range and for um, students in the gifted population. and. Um, we, we want to have fun at camp as well. Okay, I want to share a little bit about the staff um, who are going to be at REACH this summer. So each year we hire a large number of seasonal staff, um, and those include our program assistants or PAs for short. They are just our uh, camp counselors, but they're a huge one of our biggest piece most important piece of our staff uh, set up each summer they are um, kind of like that one-on-one -on -one support for a group of small group of students and they're uh, staying overnight with students and they guide them um, walk them to and from meals and activities they help run our activities um, they're kind of in like a mentor rule role as well. Um, and we typically hire UNR undergraduate students to fill this role. Um, and it's really exciting to see uh, who we have each summer and uh, the they really bring the life to our programs. We also have health supervisors at our summer camp. So they uh, are on site daily. They are providing, uh, distributing medications to students, whether that's AM or PM or lunch, whatever that might need to be, um, and addressing any student uh, health needs uh, that come up throughout the program. And we also hire our instructors each year. So uh, thankfully, I don't teach <laughs> the students at REACH and neither does Avery. We hire Davidson Academy instructors. Um, sometimes they're from the Reno campus, sometimes from the online campus. Um, and they're really, uh, they have the, the experience working with the PG students year round. And so it's exciting for them to build these courses. We are members of the American Camp Association, and this is a huge national um, association that um, camps provides accreditation to some camps, and but most importantly, pro professional development all year long resources. It's what we uh, go to to, pro to build a lot of our policies and standards um, throughout the year, and it's really the place that camps go to uh, learn and build their programs. We um, actually will be heading to the na national conference that we usually attend each year. Um, me and Avery will be heading there in February. Um, and it's a really fun experience to, to but also overwhelming to, to learn all the different things we can be improving upon or doing new ideas um, each year as well. Okay, the much anticipated schedule. So, this uh, at REACH, the arrival day, we'll start with that, is going to be su Sunday, June 25th after the summit. Um, and so it'll kind of check in. We'll start at about 3 p.m. right as that's wrapping up. Um, it might overlap depending on how, what time they end up scheduling the keynote, the closing keynote keynote with. Um, however, we can't move too much later because we're going to be running into dinner and then we won't have time for program orientation or things like that. Um, but it's all close together. So if you're attending the summit, you'll have a really easy time getting to check in for REACH. And um, new this year, if you are not attending the summit and you won't already be here on campus, um, please keep in mind that students have to be checked in and out of the program by a parent guardian. Um, we are providing an option that parents can work with other REACH parents um, or other Young Scholar parents that will be here for the summit potentially to um, 
kind of carpool in a sense, or uh, they can appoint an adult over the age of 25 to check their student in and out um, if needed, if they're not available or able to travel. But uh, we are not providing airport supervision and we are not providing a shuttle service and your student cannot just check themselves in. They have to be brought to the program by a parent guardian or appointed adults. <clears throat> then the rest of the evening will be set up uh, in their dorms, so we'll have them unpack, we'll assist them with the unpacking and getting them all settled with their roommates in their room. We go through an extensive program orientation to um, go over the handbook and the rules and kind of how the week's going to flow to set your student up for success so they know um, what to expect uh, throughout the week and uh, what, what we'll be doing. Um, we also take a tour of the campus, which is really fun. We usually do a fun uh, activity with that and the students will get to, um, so if they weren't there for the summit or didn't have time to explore some parts of the campus, they'll get to have a tour of the, of the campus and areas we'll be visiting throughout the week. We'll also get set up with their technology, um, meaning their laptops that we'll be providing to them for their seminar courses and any other course materials that they need to prep for that to start the next day. And then we spend a lot of time doing icebreakers and activities, uh, team building things to get, just get everyone comfortable and knowing one another. Now, then throughout the week, Monday through Friday, this is kind of the what the schedule is going to look like. So breakfast um, is 7.30 to 8.30, and then they'll head off to a field trip. Um, so we have time for field trips Monday through Thursday, and this is new to the schedule. So typically, we were um, in past years for REACH when we did it online in 2021 and what it was slated to be before its cancellation this past summer in 2022. Um, it was going to have class time in the morning and then lab time in the afternoon, um, and there was really no time for engaging field trips. Um, and so we've kind of reimagined the, the REACH daily schedule um, and taking kind of our um, not only our favorite parts um, but also the students favorite parts of the star schedule and what's been really successful um, with this type of program that's not for credit um, and knowing that uh, we've also reduced class time for think um, we wanted to thoughtfully kind of change that to really maximize the experience of our students and um, part of what uh, students really take away from and really love about STARS and what we uh, really do as well is engaging them in field trips. And so a number of those are on-campus field trips. Uh, we work with outreach departments um, on campus, whether that's the engineering department or the medical school or different things like that to provide really, um, there's still a lot of them are academic based, um, engaging uh, hands on field trip and they're uh, meant to be for this age range. So they, if your students been to STARS in past years, they'll be different for reach, even if we're going to the same area, they'll, um, they're going to tailor it to this age range and this ability level um, even more so. And then we also will have one big uh, off campus field trip that is to be determined, uh, but it'll be fun, something um, similar to think where we're taking charter buses um, or UNR shuttle buses somewhere around town to um, just take a break and have a lot of fun um, here in Reno. Uh, so we're that's to, to be determined, but when we have more information for that available, um, we can let families know, but we're really excited about that. Um, previously, we really didn't have a lot of time for that, and there was only going to be one field trip for the whole program. So we're really looking forward to, um, to, to seeing how this plays out this year. Uh, students will be wrapping up their field trips and heading back to the dorm just to get settled for lunch and their seminar course. So once lunch is over, they'll head into their seminar course and they'll have about three and a half hours of uh, whether that's it'll be a mix of lecture, and project uh, lab hands-on time um, and they'll definitely get breaks so three and a half hours is kind of a long time to be in class um, but it's uh, instructors are prepared to give multiple breaks throughout that uh, time uh, for students where we do provide snack as well um, and they'll be diving deep into that one topic whereas stars they stay they don't stay in one topic they rotate through a couple different exploratory topics uh, each day 
whereas reach um, they'll stay in their one seminar course so i'll talk a little bit more about that in a bit as well um, then they'll move into homework time and computer time so uh, as they're wrapping up class we will uh, have a specific hour set aside before dinner where they um, can continue working on that project um, and instructors will be assigning homework and that might include reading or researching, working on that project that they're going to um, present at the end of the program, um, things like that. Then we'll move into dinner and after dinner, it's a really fun uh, time each evening. Avery's working on a number of um, evening activities and we're still nailing those down, but uh, different examples could be things like a board game night or water games, um, arts and crafts, large group games. We are working on things like a talent show or even a mock rock show. Um, and so those are really fun curated camp activities and time for students to socialize and connect and uh, um, get to know one another even more. And every evening for all of our programs, we have a daily debrief uh, time where students can just um, get together in their small groups, talk about how the day went, um, and kind of get ready for lights out for the evening. All right, student life. <clears throat> at REACH, students will be staying in a um, dorm hall, just like um, uh, our stars and think program we take over one whole floor of the dorm and it's just our participants and our staff and so this year we'll be back in our Genta hall we were in Peavine hall this past summer because our Genta was still being renovated and now we're going to be back in our Genta and we just took a new tour of it it's our main hall that we've been uh usually running our programs out of uh forever and so it's really exciting to be back at it but also that it's uh really fresh and renovated so um, it's really beautiful inside they have new little uh, study rooms on the floor and they have a common every floor has a common area where we meet and do announcements um, each room is a triple occupancy room in our Genta Hall, so there'll be three students per room, and we do a room based off of gender identification and we also provide a survey to get to gather more information on whether your students uh, more social, less social, likes it hot or cold, uh, is a night owl or an early riser, just to kind of try and match students up um, a little bit more to, to help provide a smooth rooming experience. Um, the bathroom is behind a closed door though, so they're able to, uh, you know, have their own private time and space for that with their roommates. Um, and uh, we also have a staff kind of command room on the dorm floor and all of our program assistants stay in the on the dorm floor and they have their own private rooms um, near their students. Our health supervisor, our nurse has a, a room as well that students can um, seek out and go to um, if needed when uh, they're having any health concerns. And at uh, REACH, we have a uh, buffet style dining. So the newly renovated dining hall at the bottom of our Genta is uh, open now as well. And so we're really excited to be back there. We were in a temporary location this past summer. Um, and while they did a really wonderful job for our programs, um, we're really excited to be back in the Down Under Cafe because it's um, bigger and has a lot more options. And so um, they have a comfort food section, pizza section, a salad bar. Um, they have an uh, Asian inspired foods, a falafel center, like everything you can think of. Um, I can't even remember from our new tour, all the different stations, but um, they vary based on whether it's breakfast, lunch, or dinner, and um, lots of options. If your student does have any special diets or food allergies, please know that um, each year we're pretty successful at having students attend with food allergies and diets. I don't, um, we haven't ever had to really turn any, anyone away from uh, our program due to this. Um, the university works with college students year round who have special diets and food allergies. And so they're really um, used to working with uh, families and students who have these concerns or issues. And so if your student's in that boat and you're unsure if they'd be able to attend REACH due to that, please email us because we'd be happy to 
talk through more of what this looks like in order to make sure your student um, can successfully attend um, our program. But we work directly with the dining staff um, to communicate through what our students' needs are. And then they let us know like, yes, that works or doesn't, or they make it work. And they have like a separate section where they cook food for people who with severe food allergies or things like that. Um, lots of options for gluten-free, dairy-free, um, kosher, things like that. So please email us if you have any questions about that. Uh, we do provide snacks throughout the day, uh, allergy friendly snacks and um, others as well. And so, uh, but we do recommend if your student um, is somebody who enjoys snacks and, you know, is going to need those throughout the program, they can bring their own for their dorm or to keep in their backpack as well. We just ask that they avoid snacks with uh, nuts. And then we also have, uh, we take students to the bookstore or wolf shop on campus and there are um, snacks there as well. So they have some spending money um, and you know they would like to, to buy snacks on campus during the program, that'll be available as well. Okay, a little bit more about the, the seminar courses at REACH and kind of what those academics look like. So there's three different options and I'll go through each uh, option and um, briefly and talk a little bit about them and but how it works is they'll rank their course preference. So it is first come first serve at uh, REACH and so um, you'll ra rank your first course preference, second course preference and third course preference and if your student's first choice course is full they'll then be assigned to their second or third depending on availability. Um, they will go on a wait list for their first choice course and we would move students um, off the wait list and into the the first choice course if a spot did open and became available if that is um, something your students interested in and we email in that during that process in case your students change their mind and they actually do want uh, whatever course they were first assigned with um, whether that is their second or third choice. All courses are taught by Davidson Academy instructors, and so they're really familiar with the uh, profoundly gifted population. You know, they're working with these students year round, um, but they're also really excited to be able to provide a stimulating, engaging, uh, challenging course that is a fun topic. And so um, they've created these project based seminar courses that can be, um, you know, exciting. It's not like your typical. Um, for lack of a better word, uh, just boring normal math or science or reading writing class during the year. Um, it's meant to have a special engaging topic where they're exploring something and they're learning about uh, challenging topics and concepts in that process. So it is project based and that's something that um, when we designed REACH we're really excited about because it's a uh, skill building that would help kind of bridge that program experience between stars and think not only is the length and the social pieces of REACH meant to be a middle ground program between our stars and think programs but also the academics as well. So while it's not for credit, um, just like stars is not for credit, instead of just um, flopping between each exploratory topic, they're staying in this one seminar course and they're going to be working on projects. So they have homework each night to build towards this end of uh, program project and each course has a different type of project. Sometimes there's a presentation and they also have to turn in a paper or um, build something for their presentation, uh, but they're taking what they're learning in class each day, working on their project and then turning that in and presenting it to their class at the end of the program on Friday morning before checkout. Um, and we also are implementing student evaluation. So instructors while it's not for credit, they will be um, completing an evaluation for each of their students, and that might include things that um, they did really well throughout the week on, whether that's classroom type of um, skills, um, projects type of skills, different things like that, and then maybe some things to just think about that would be helpful to work on moving into high school um, endeavors um, or challenging courses in the future. Okay, so our three seminar courses. The first one um, I want to talk about is the Biomechanics of Animal Locomotion with Martin Brake. So I'm really excited about this course because we were slated to have it in 2022 prior to cancellation. And so Martin's coming back and finally going to be implementing it this summer for 2023. Um, in this 
sounds so exciting and cool to me to learn more about the way animals move and the physics behind it. And so there's going to be lots of great STEM uh, concepts lot, uh, taught during this uh, program and um, the end of summer, you can read more about the end of seminar project, but it sounds really exciting. Um, Martin's been at the Davidson County for a really long time, um, over, I think it's actually over 11 years now, um, but he uh, is really excited to bring, bring this uh, seminar course to life this year. Next, we have Making a Mystery, Inspiration and Innovation in the Genre with Julie Dillard. And this is a really exciting seminar course. Um, Julie has taught at actually our STAR summer camp for um, a really long time. And uh, we're really excited to move her into the, a role um, instructing at REACH. Um, to, she's building this reading, writing, uh, literature course. Um, she's really wonderful. Um, <clears throat> Excuse me. Really a wonderful uh, instructor and is able to work with these students on an in-depth basis every year. She makes the coolest, funnest academic sessions at STARS. And so now we're really excited to see that play out in a reach where it's a, a concept building uh, seminar course that builds over the process of a uh, week long. And so uh, we've actually had a lot of good interest in this seminar course so far, and it sounds really exciting to me. When I read it, I wanted to attend this session and be in this this year. Um, she's a really great uh, instructor who takes the time to really uh, make sure every student's where they're at and what they, you know, doesn't have any questions or works through the questions with them and um, are doing what they need to be doing. And lastly, this is another really popular course as well. Um, the things you've always wondered, philosophy and life's big questions. So the philosophy course that we had slated for 2022 with a different reach daily schedule has actually shifted slightly. Um, he changed this a little bit um, just to fit the new schedule, but it's still a philosophy based uh, course. And um, this is something that John teaches um, a different type of philosophy course at, at the Davidson Academy during the school year. And it always has a wait list. Um, and I think we had a wait list for this last year as well. Um, but it, he's just really engaging and exciting. And um, the, the topic of this going into life's big questions and all these things that they're going to explore sounds really exciting as well. Okay, a little bit more about academics. So I, like I mentioned, they're meant to be challenging and hands-on. Um, and so the instructors are really good at differentiating if a student maybe is a little bit ahead than some of the other students in class, they'll um, do their best to provide um, resources and opportunities for that student to go a little bit further as needed. Um, our program assistants stay in the course um, and um, or stay, you know, they stay really engaged in what's going on in the courses, including uh, teaching assistants that the instructors have um, in with them as well, helping lead and guide the program. Um, and we're checking in in the evenings during homework time so they know what's going on, who's maybe struggling or needs more support, who needs more redirection and focus on their homework, things like that. Uh, one thing we're really excited to help students with is uh, providing some more of those uh, seminar course built uh, ac executive functioning academic skills where they can communicate with their instructor when they have questions. So um, they're really encouraged to reach out to their instructor to um, self advocate as needed w under our guidance and our assistance as well. And then, of course, no news is good news, but if we do have any questions for parents um, and any concerns or uh, just want to check in and, and let parents know maybe some things we're seeing or students may be struggling with, we will be reaching out. We promise we uh, do reach out as needed. However, in our case, no news is good news. So um, if, if we're not reaching out directly, then your student's likely doing very well at REACH. Um, and of course, parents are welcome to check in with us if they're curious how things are going. Um, but in our case, no news is good news at, at camp. Um, so yeah, just some things to keep in mind for academics. If your student's kind of ready for an experience at, uh, at REACH and what that looks like is, um, you know, they, they're wanting to dive deep into that one seminar course, uh, work on homework, um, and uh, present their projects. So they're looking forward to those things at a summer camp and not just simply exploring topics like uh, STARS is. Um, so they'll want to have some, hopefully some come into the program with some good time management skills 
uh, for working on their homework and getting that project done in time and being, um, so of course being organized is helpful and then uh, being motivated as well. Okay, health and wellness at REACH. So prior to REACH, we take uh, intake health records and that might be a health history form. It's a it's a extensive form online that we um, have curated through our, our form keeping system. And um, it goes pretty in depth, but it's only uh, that much more helpful for our nurse to prepare. All students are required to be insured and had a recent physical exam by a doctor within the past two years. Uh, we do require immunization records, and so we follow the um, Nevada Department of Education, Washoe County School District immunization requirements for our um, for age appropriate vaccines for our programs. Um, and so that is linked in our website if you're curious of what uh, minimum immunization students are required to have to come to reach. Um, this year, COVID-19 vaccine, uh, while it's not required, um, it is highly encouraged that students are um, immunized and um, including all eligible boosters uh, when appropriate um, for COVID-19, um, but it is not required and that is also listed on our website. Um, and then we also ask for medication information. We do require all of that inputted in our system prior to coming to camp so that our nurse can be prepared um, with knowing who is going to be taking what and when. Um, and that's all reviewed by our health supervisor and she'll be, she does, uh, if needed, she does reach out to parents prior to camp to make sure she doesn't have any questions or concerns about how we can appropriately care for your student at camp. Then during the program, all um, students are screened upon check-in, and this is something we've been doing for a number of years, and um, this year, uh, I just would like to mention that we are subject to UNR's policies and protocols. Um, as of right now, they're not requiring testing, but um, that's something they could always enforce upon us um, as we are staying on campus in their dorm halls, utilizing their dining uh, facilities. We are required to um, we to follow their policies and protocols, and they could those could change. So just something to keep in mind that testing could be required um, for check-in um, and um, among other health screening items that we always usually do. We do collect all medications during check-in and they're locked in our nurse, nurse health, uh, health supervisor room. Uh, of course, uh, EpiPens, inhalers, rescue medications like that can be kept on students. Um, but OTCs, vitamins, all of those kinds of things do have to stay in our health supervisor room um, and they'll be distributed as needed. And our health supervisor's on site daily. So she's distributing that medication, whether it's breakfast, lunch, dinner, whenever it needs to be distributed, um, checking in, you know, if students having a bloody nose or their foot doesn't feel right, or maybe they do have some sort of injury or illness coming on, she's on site uh, addressing those needs throughout the day. Okay, some things to keep in mind to prepare for REACH. Um, the best place you can first visit is our parent resources section. Um, and Avery is going to be sending the, a link to this in the chat, but you can also get to it by going to um, davidsongifted.org to our programs. And then uh, when you click in summer programs, it's just below the three summer program options. Um, so it's really important to check this page out. Um, in the getting ready section, we have health and medical care, so you can read more about what that looks like at our camps. Um, what we do and what parents can do to prepare for homesickness. Uh, our 2022 handbooks are available right now. Uh, we don't have the 2023 one quite ready yet, but um, it's going to be pretty similar to 2022, so you can check out last year's um, if you're curious, uh, but we will have that available soon. Um, travel this year. So that page is really important. It has our check in and check out times and more information on our new policies for um, students being required to be checked in and out by a parent guardian. Um, and our packing lists will be available uh, in the coming months as well, but you can check out last year's as they'll be pretty similar for 2023 as well.
And then just below getting ready is our policy section. This is really important. You should um, know about our policies and protocols um, before your students coming. You should be reviewing those with your students so they're aware of what um, they're going to be expected uh, to expect at camp. So the first area just talks more about our supervision policies, um, our communicable illness plan and policies. We actually created a number of years ago prior to the pandemic it's actually when um, measles was starting to break out in different parts of the country um, but this uh, COVID including um, all of those kinds of communicable illnesses will be falling under this plan and policies and protocols this year so that's um, where you could read more about what we do prior to the program during the program and in an instance if a student um, has an outbreak, uh, we we will be following our policies and protocols in there. It also has our vaccine preventable policy. So if your student does not have a vaccine pre vaccine um, for a disease that is vaccine preventable, that's kind of what we follow in there as well. And then um, our electronic device policy that's really important to read more about our fully connected community at reach and why we don't allow cell phones or personal devices that connect to the internet um, it's just really to provide that space to focus on our academics really be in a true camp environment where we're focusing on connecting with one another um, and uh, just enjoying the program experience and focusing on homework and academics and then communication so how our staff communicates with parents and how they can communicate with us and students as well. So just thinking more uh, beyond just like the simple eligibility, is the program a good fit? So a few things to keep in mind if you're interested in this program. Um, it is, you know, a full week away from parents. And so if they haven't had an overnight experience and they're nervous, um, it doesn't mean they're not eligible or it's not a good fit, but it's just something to have a conversation about and um, to make sure your student's ready to spend uh, six days, five nights away from parents and out of contact with them as well. Of course, if there's emergencies, there, those things come up and we can uh, get parents and students connected. But for the most part, they are not talking during the program. It's a true summer camp experience. Um, they should be prepared uh, to have at least one to two other roommates. And so um, something to keep in mind for goodness of fit is that they're going to be in that camp community um, and uh, be staying in the dorm hall with other roommates. Uh, we do do some like roommate contract conversations uh, during the program orientation night, um, but um, and we we help and guide students through any roommate issues if they do come up, um, but it is something that they'll be experiencing. So again, they'll be fully connected with no cell phones. Um, if that's something your student's not going to be able to abide by or it's going to um, be a struggle for them just uh, a conversation with them about the goodness of fit of this program and um, reading through that policy and why we have that uh, would be a really good uh, thing to do. And then um, this is always something that gets brought up every year, but um, it's something I want to point out that the program schedule probably allows for more than nine hours of sleep, but uh, students are really excited to be away at summer camp overnight with their new friends um, in a dorm hall on a university campus and so getting jumping into bed getting to sleep is not really the first thing they're uh, looking forward to each night they just still want to have fun and continue the fun we do have lights out though and we do have policies in, in place for getting students in bed at an appropriate time um, but sometimes it's hard for them to get to sleep um, and then we're up and getting ready for breakfast by 7 30 so um, sometimes sleep is a little bit less at camp than maybe they're used to back at home but we promise that's uh, normal and most students do just fine fine with this experience um, and get through the week just fine. And then just uh, another thing to reiterate is that they're going to be needing to make sure that they can follow um, direction from uh, staff and people who are not their parents and they're able to transition along through each activity throughout the day. What you can do to help your student prepare is practicing good homework and study habits, um, some of those self advocacy and motivation skills getting organized because um, that project is really self driven. They, like I reiterated, they can go through and um, with parents, students should review the website and handbook. Um, 
going through those parent resources sections as well. Um, and then a few things that are really helpful that parents can do is to share consistent and positive messages about camp. So um, if you want your student to be confident in coming to camp and uh, enjoy the experience, the one of the best things you can do is is talk about it in a confident uh, positive way and so um sharing those messages prior to camp your student is going to hear those and absorb those and come into camp feeling like they are able to do it maybe they do have some questions or maybe they are nervous about different aspects but if you're confident in them and you talk about uh camp and what we're experience they're going to have and what staff can do for them at camp um the more they're going to enjoy it and and have a good time as well and then a simple thing but it can be really helpful is to include them in packing and preparing their their things they're going to have more confidence that they know they're prepared with what they need to wear each day um, maybe their favorite uh, music mp3 player or uh, snacks or their favorite water bottle um, if you kind of come up with a list of okay here's what's your sending to camp it also helps them packing on checkout day to make sure they're coming home with all the things that they came with um, but it just also can increase that confidence so just to reiterate the highlighted 2023 changes this year are the the daily program schedule and length it's re been uh, reimagined to be a one week experience to really maximize uh, the experience for all the students with the engaging academic um, on campus and off campus field trips and to really still dive deep and balance those academics with the social time um, in the seminar courses at the afternoon as well um, and still have homework in, in that end of program uh, project that they're going to present and turn in. And so we're really excited about this. Um, and I think it's going to be a really uh, better shift for students and for successfully launching Reach in person for the first year. Um, and so we're really excited to, to see this be implemented. And then secondly, just to reiterate, we no longer provide airport supervision or a shuttle service and students cannot just come check themselves into camp. They have to be brought to and from camp by a parent guardian or appointed adult over the age of 25. And that all has to be done prior to June so that we are aware of who's coming with who. Okay, just to quickly go through the application process, um, Avery's also going to send out a link to the admissions page, but it has step by step guidance of how to go ahead and apply for reach. It just opened yesterday. So if you're we're waiting for this info session to learn more um, and you're wanting to dive into that process, the link is available on the website, on the admissions pages. Um, placement is first come, first serve. So we recommend if you're only interested in one seminar course and you're not potentially interested in being placed in a second or third one at all, then apply sooner than later. Um, the deadline, however, is March 31st. So you do have some time if you're still thinking about it. Um, but to, to kind of go through an overview of how the way we recommend applying, first thing is to prep your materials prior to jumping into the online application. You'll be um, much more successful and it'll be much more easier getting through that online application if it's all prepped uh, previously. There are student essays that need to be responded to. And so we recommend typing those up in a Word document. And then when um, the text box in the online application come up for your student to answer in those, they can just copy and paste into the text boxes and they're not just trying to quickly type something and hit submit um, and rushing through that process. We are really looking at those essays to see why your student wants to come, why they're ready, um, and kind of making sure they're at least at a minimum level to be able to work in these seminar courses. There are parent and student questions within the application, so please make sure both parents and students are available to apply online um, during that process. And then once you submit, there's a two week review period. So once you've submitted, we take up to two weeks to review it and get you a decision. And then if your students accepted, you have two weeks from that acceptance email to pay your deposit to reserve your space. 
Okay, that wraps up our presentation portion. I just want to mention, please reach out to us. Uh, we will have some updates as needed. Remind, application reminders will go out in a summer newsletter. If you're subscribed to that, you can subscribe to it on our website um, if you're not already. Uh, but you can email or call us at any time. We'd be happy to answer your questions. Um, we're going to jump into the Q&A. I think Avery's been answering some of those via writing. Um, so if you're unsure if your question's already been answered, you can open that up and look um, if you haven't already. Um, and I'll answer some live here in just a second, but I'd also like to point out if your student's currently going through the Young Scholar application process, you can reach out to ysapplications at davidsonkidda.org to connect with that team directly on how that's going. And just a reminder for our 2023 dates. Okay, <clears throat> let's get started. Okay, my DYS Davidson Scholar is worried about the two hours of homework every day. Is it pretty intense? Are the scholars working collaboratively or independently for homework? This is a great question. So um, it's up to two hours. It's likely going to only be about an hour. So we've actually reserved from about 4.30 to 5.30 p.m. each day um, for homework. I don't anticipate that um, it'll be much more than that. The two hours kind of is getting at more so if a student is struggling at getting that done and they need more time in the evenings, we can provide space for that. But the goal is for everyone to get um, their homework done within the hour and the instructors are assigning only about an hour worth of homework. Uh, majority of that will be reading or researching for their project and for lecture the next day. So it's really curated to fit that time. Um, they'll have a laptop access for their homework time and some of it will also be um, independently working on their project. Um, so most of the projects are independent projects. Sometimes they do have some collaboration with uh, groups or other students as well. So it could be a mix of both collaboration time or independent time. Um, however, we will be coming out of our seminar courses and we'll all be heading into um, Jan's place in the Davidson Academy. It's like a big study lunch hall and we'll have tables out and and all students will carry their laptops in there. Everyone will sit down and it'll be a quiet time driven for homework. Our staff will be coming around making sure everyone in each class knows what they need to be doing um, and helping them work through that process. Um, but it's really like instead of where I think it's completely student driven where they have all evening to do it and some are good at getting it done on time and some are up late doing it. Uh, we're providing that hour for them to get it done. Um, and so we're really curating the schedule to make them successful. So instead of just uh, letting them get uh, carried away in activities and forgetting about their homework, it's that set time for them to sit down and do it. Um, it's not meant to be super intense. It's really just meant to help build the, the skills um, in a project-based setting hopefully for a student to then one be one day be successful at a program like think um, if that didn't answer your question please email us i'd be happy to connect with you more on that okay how would parents be able to communicate with their child during camp so like stars uh the or other summer camps um there isn't any parent student direct communication um their students do not have their cell phones so if they're traveling with it um, parents, we ask that parents take that at check-in, um, or our staff can also store it in our staff room at check-in, um, but they will not have cell phones, and just like a true summer camp, you will not be talking to your student directly during the uh, six days, five nights. Um, however, the students will have laptops for seminar courses, so, um, you know, you're welcome to utilize an e email function during that time. You know, we won't have, like, Zoom or anything like that set up for students, but you can um, set up an email account for them to check their email and, and write back to you. Um, however, I say that with caution because there's going to be a couple things to keep in mind with that. It can actually make homesickness worse. Um, students who, um, it's been shown over research that uh, in a true summer camp setting when they're out of contact with parents, um, students who are homesick that are working with staff through that process and will be in touch with parents if needed, as needed through that as well. Um, sometimes when they're able to talk with parents, it makes them think of home and makes homesickness work worse. Um, and it can cause some jealousy of like, oh, my parents emailed or mine didn't. And so 
the idea is to have it be a fully uh, true summer camp experience where they're not talking with parents during that program time. Um, it would also take away from their homework time. Um, so they should not be on email during class and then they shouldn't really be on email during homework time. However, if, if they've all finished up uh, and there's, they have 10 minutes to spare, they could log in and check their email as well. But um, it's really meant to be a true summer camp experience where they're not talking to parents um, during the program. If you have more questions about communication during summer camp, um, please email us. Okay, can a student who will turn 11 apply for both REACH and STARS and decide later? Um, that's a great question. Um, I would uh, recommend you email us and uh, they're really two different experiences so stars um, they're just exploring academic topics uh, each day and this is more of like I'm attending this program to do fun camp activities and field trips but really to attend this class as well so it's uh, even much more academic fo focus than stars is to bridge that experience between stars and think so they're really truly two different experiences even though the schedule will mirror, e mirror each other in some ways um and so yeah students cannot attend both stars and reach we do not we unfortunately have way more interest than spaces available and so we really want young scholars to pick which experience they're looking forward to um however so we prefer you have a conversation with us um, to decide which one your students more so looking forward to um, and if they're really up for either you could apply to the stars lottery and if they don't get a space um, then you can apply to reach just keep in mind that placement for reach is first come first serve so if you applied to reach now and you waited to get your stars lottery notification to then decide your deposit would be due and that's non-refundable so it kind of just it gets a little bit sticky and so um, it's really sitting down with your student and explaining uh, more what stars looks like and if you're curious or have questions about that email us or attend the stars info session on Thursday later this week. Um, and if that's something that maybe they've never been to summer camp and they just want to have uh, more exploratory academic fun um, stars might be a better fit it's a little bit shorter of a program leading the week before the summit, or if they're looking to be a little bit more challenged and um, have that project based academic homework uh, seminar type course, then maybe reach is something that they're looking for. Um, so please reach out if you have more questions from that. Okay, and last question. I'll go ahead and answer before we wrap up. Can you give info on available financial aid? Yes, we do have needs-based financial aid available um, for STARS and REACH. We don't link those on the website because you have to do it through um, the Young Scholars full FA process. And so email us and we can get you the links on where to go to find that. Um, but it is uh, requires tax information, all of that. And it's really parent-driven to make sure they're getting everything in in time to, uh, um, it can take up to a month to get FA uh, decisions, uh, but it is needs based and totally available um, for families to apply to. We, once your family is eligible for FA, if they are, um, we would then have you submit a request form specific to the REACH program. And um, from there, um, you can say whether you're looking for help on the tuition or student travel. So we don't cover costs for parents to travel with the student, but we could cover partial costs for um, the student portion of their travel to help with that. Um, we don't cover anything 100%. Um, it'll all be just partial coverage help, um, but it is needs-based and available for applications. So just email us if uh, you'd like more information in the links for that. Oh, and I see one more just popped in. I'll go ahead and answer before I shoot it back to Jessica. Um, can students request roommates? Yes, we do have a roommate request form once they're accepted. Um, and while we can never like necessarily guarantee they would 100% always get their requests because it's uh, based on a number of factors of our how many um, gender identification ratios we have of each student, um, we, we do take them into serious consideration and we're almost um, usually really able to uh, accommodate these requests but they're not a guarantee but definitely can be requested all right I think that wraps up for Q&A if you do have more questions please email us and we'll get back to you
Oh, thank you so much, Kayla, for all of this information about REACH and for addressing questions from our audience. Um, and before we close, any closing statements for, for them? Yeah, no, just want to reiterate that it's the Appalachians now open um, through March 31st, um, and we're really excited for our three seminar courses this year. They're really fun and engaging um, and challenging for your student, and so please email us if you have any questions about the application process or just wanting to learn more about REACH. Awesome. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. And please remember to do that survey when the session closes. If you'd like to view the session again, uh, we'll have the recording on um, the Davidson member community. And thanks again, Kayla. Have a great day, everyone. Thanks.